So excited for you to get started on this course. This is part one out of seven, but can also be watched as a standalone video. This course goes over how to go from building spreadsheets to building apps on bubble.io. I started this journey two years ago. I'm so excited to be able to share it with you everything I know right here on YouTube for free. If you want access to the course materials like the bubble editor and the um, spreadsheets I use, you can purchase access in the description. I really hope you enjoy and please leave comments with feedback and let me know how it is. The bubble database is just an Excel workbook with tabs, as we can see here and columns and rows. This is the most important concept you need to understand about bubble is that it's exactly like Excel with columns and rows, but it looks very different in terms of UI, right? It doesn't look like this on bubble. So I'm going to show you exactly how we can take something from Excel in an Excel format and actually reproduce it onto bubble. This is the foundation for everything related to the bubble database. I'm going to start with an example of a personal CRM. So if you are an Excel expert, you probably go to networking events and you meet people and you want to keep track of the people you may maybe at conferences, et cetera. So you put it into an Excel sheet, but in the future, maybe you want to turn this into an app. So in an Excel sheet, it would look like this. You would save the full name of the person that you met at a party, their email, and maybe their phone number, their, the company they work for where you met, where they're from in general, and the date you met. So you can always go back and see the person's contact info and maybe share it with your friends. So let's see how we can create, recreate these columns and rows in Bubble. So now we're in Bubble and we logged into an app. We created an app and went to the data tab and data types. So not workflow, data and data types. So let's create our database of contacts. So the first thing we want to do is go to type and type in contact. This is the equivalent of a tab in Excel. So if I create contact, it, it's basically creating a table for me. So if you go back to our Excel table, it looks like this, right? Personal CRM. So we can change this to contact and that's the equivalent in the bubble database. The next thing we want to do is add in the columns that we need to fill out the data, right? We need to add columns, but unlike Excel, we don't have that sheet view. We just have create new field, which means create new column. Column in Excel equals field in bubble. So the first field we're gonna create is full name and the field type it is text, right? And your name is going to be a text, but I'm gonna go over that in later videos. So let's create the full name. The next one we want to create is email, phone number, company, etc. So to create another column, let's call this email, phone number. As text for this example, they'll all be text. Location meeting, you get the point. Okay, so now we have this entire sheet inside of Bubble. It's technically created in our Bubble app. So this in Excel equals this in bubble. So the columns are essentially over here are the field types and the type name, the data type is going to be the tab here. So we can call this contacts as the equivalent. That is how to create the columns and the type, which is the tab, but next we're gonna look at how the data works. So to see the actual data, Bubble has this weird view that is very similar to Excel on app data. So if I go to app data and I go on the left to contacts, let's ignore users for now. Right now we have contacts. Now we can see a view similar to Excel with additional fields like created date that Bubble automatically has, which is a column, we can see that this looks very similar to our Excel table. And this view is really cool because it actually visualizes how Bubble has, it's like a worse Excel. So in, in Excel or Google Sheets, you can create a record by just typing directly in the cell. In Bubble, you can't do that. You, if I type here, nothing is happening. So the way to actually add entries 
to this database for our example. And our example test case would be to click new entry. And over here, we can fill out all the information we need. We can fill out Jeff Richards and Jake Masters and let's say Jeff Richards. And we can fill out all the other info here. And then once we fill it all out, we can click create. And then what we have is what we call a record. So the columns are called fields. The tab in Excel format is called data type, which is over here, contacts. And the rows are called records. So over here, we have a record for Jeff Richards, and we can fill out all the information related to this contact. And you can imagine thousands of thousands of contact. But anytime I say record, I mean just a row in the database, a row similar to a row in Excel. This is one record. This is another record. This is a column. And when I say column, when I say field, okay? So when I say field, I just mean column. In Excel. So location meeting, that's a column, that's a field. And when I say data type, whenever we say data type, we just mean a tab in Excel. Okay, let's go quickly over two more examples that we have here. So over here, I decided this is a separate app, hypothetically. So I don't know, I put them in the same workbook for no reason. You probably don't want an app with contacts, fridge, inventory, and ice cream transactions, unless you're some sort of that would be an interesting platform. <laughs> You'd have to combine all three, but let's take a separate app that I would create, which would be one where I'm keeping track of my fridge inventory, especially, you know, as produce goes bad, I want to keep track of it and figure out, you know, what's going bad when, what do I have to throw out? What do I need? So over here, I would create a table in Excel or Google sheets, and I would put in the name, the category expiry date, and over here, I would have all the records that I need, and I can keep track of it like this. Now, let's bring this into Bubble. So let's go into Bubble and create a new type, which is fridge inventory. And let's call this inventory fridge. And then over here, what we have is the name. These are the columns or the types, so type name. And then we have the category and the purchase date and expiry date. So let's add in here, purchase date, expiry date. Uh, okay. okay, awesome. This is how this looks. Now let's go into the app data and see how the table looks. You can see all, if I click here, I see my contacts. And if I click here, I see my inventory items, my fridge inventory items, which is exactly like here. I'm just clicking between tabs. Now to add records, if I would want to add a record, I would add apples over here and click create. Awesome. And you can fill out all the fields. Cool. And we have apples over here, which is a record. So this is a field. This is a record. And this is a data type. So we have two data types now. One is contacts, each with a bunch of fields. And we have one record for each of them, right? We have one contact right now, and we have one French inventory. So now let's go back to the Bubble database, and I'm going to have you pause here and actually create your own table in Bubble that is for ice cream transactions. So in this example, what I did was I created a, I'm an ice cream shop, and I just want to keep track of my transactions. And let's hypothetically create a scenario where if somebody buys, if one group buys a chocolate, a vanilla, and strawberry ice cream, there are three separate transactions just for this example. Go ahead and pause here and try to recreate that in a bubble app. Open a bubble, create a bubble app, and try to recreate this table. OK, hopefully you got it by now. Let's go to bubble and actually create 
this table. So let's call this ice cream transaction. Oh, you don't want to say transactions. You want to say in because bubble will automatically make it plural for you later on. So that's the data type or the workbook. And then over here, we're going to add ice cream name, time of purchase. Let's do ice cream name. And we're just going to keep them all text for now. Time of purchase. And revenue before tax and revenue after tax. All right, so now we created the fields, which were the columns. We have the data type, and now let's just create an example record. Maybe we can create two records. So, and then revenue before tax will be 12, revenue after tax will be 13. No, oh, no, time of purchase is going to be 10 a.m., and revenue before tax will be 11, which will be less then revenue after tax and I click create and I have a record over here and I can create one last record just for the example vanilla revenue after tax will be seven dollars revenue before tax will be six dollars and the time of purchase will be 11 a.m and that's how I have multiple records and this is the basics of entirety of the bubble database it's just an excel workbook with multiple tabs so Go ahead and try and create a few different tables as examples for, you know, apps you may want to create. If it's a personal budgeting app. You may want to create a table with your personal transaction. So go ahead and maybe try an example there to create a table of your own and just get used to navigating between the data types tab here and going through and creating fields, data types, and then creating records. Again, fields equals columns. So field is a column. Data type equals a tab, okay? This is a data type. Contacts is a data type. And then a record is a row, okay? So column equals type equals field, column equals field, record equals row, and data type equals tab. Thanks for watching.